<clears throat> okay, I think we're live. I think we're good. So let's just wait for a couple people to get on here. Anyways, let's start. <clears throat> so I was trying to go live on YouTube, but YouTube is kind of dumb because you need 1,000 subscribers. I barely have 15, <laughs> so that's not going to happen. But it's okay. We'll figure it out next time. There's a lot of little requirements for that, but okay, anyways, that's not the point. So I'm just going to go on Instagram Live. I was going to go through my um, other uh, Instagram page, but I don't, have that much, I don't have that much followers just yet. So if you guys want to actually go on to that and follow it, um, actually, I just started that page just a couple of uh, weeks ago, so just go ahead and um, uh, follow that page. But anyways, we're going to get started with some questions and answers. If you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, go to YouTube uh, slash Verse by Verse Ministries, and it's pretty much a channel about going verse by verse uh, through the Bible and how easy it is to understand the Bible. So um, it's pretty easy to understand once you actually, you know, how, how to read it, you know how to read it, and also um, just if you just read it. I mean, seriously, it's so easy to understand. Um, but anyway, so mainly, um, what I'm going to do with my hat, okay, so I'm going to do a little drawing because we did have a, a little contest on my YouTube channel, so I'll be doing more contests later on, but uh, for now, we're doing this contest, which is basically, I just ask you guys to subscribe to my channel, uh, like, share the video, comment, and that would be pretty much any, um, that would be, that would be pretty much points for you to enter the uh, draw so we're just gonna have a little hat right here we're just gonna shake it and see who won who won the the mug and it's a customized mug 100% free I'll take it to you if I, if you live around here or I'll uh, ship it to you wherever you're at in the US so um, there's a couple people that got in it and um, I just I'm just gonna shake it and see who it is okay got one person right here of course I can already see one. So it's Brother Isaiah Salgado, and I'll let him know, either comment or uh, message him, but he won. He actually ended up uh, commenting like three times, so I have to you know, put him in there three times. So anyways, that he, he won the, the mug, and I'll just message him, and he can put whatever he wants on it, and I'll be doing something similar in the next coming weeks when we go to Genesis chapter 2 so if you haven't seen Genesis chapter 1 the videos are on my YouTube channel go to my YouTube channel you can see that and I'll be putting up a video tomorrow and I'll be starting Genesis chapter 2 in the coming uh, week so go ahead and subscribe to that and and just look forward to that but anyways so now let's uh, answer some questions so Genesis chapter 1 mainly was what I focused on um, but question number one was who was God talking to in verse 26 in Genesis 1:26. So it says, let me just read it, just so you guys um, can have a little bit of an idea of what's going on, right? You guys need to watch that video in order for me to actually go. I actually um, talk about that question and answer that question really, really in depth on that. Um, so if you guys want to watch that video, it's video number two, no, video number three on that, and just watch that. And then I usually I went I went really into that question, but anyways. Genesis 126 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, etc. But what we want to focus on is what, what we want to focus on is it says, Let us make man in our image. God is saying this, obviously, because it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Well, God is saying, Hey, let us make man in our image. Who is he talking to right there? That's weird, right? Well, we know it's not the angels. We know it can't be anything spiritual like that. We know it can't be talking about animals because we don't, first of all, we don't look like them. And I know it's not just talking about the physical image. It's talking about, you know, uh, 
all the aspects of being a human and being able to communicate and be able being able to express feelings and etc. But we don't look like animals, so therefore, we were not created. He wasn't talking to an animal. He wasn't talking to angels either, because angels are not are not. They can't create. Animals can't create either, but they angels cannot create something. Angels cannot make something like God can. So he wasn't talking about angels, he wasn't talking about animals, so who was he talking to? And we know that he was talking to Jesus. Why? Because in John 1, 12 says, it's pretty self-explanatory, it says, as, uh, John 1, 12 answers this, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So that's uh, verse, tw verse 2 on John 1, 2. So that verse clearly answers that Jesus was there. Jesus is the one that God the Father is talking to. And it's very difficult to comprehend and understand the the Holy Trinity of how God is or you know how how he is. It's very difficult to understand. But God is a triune being. That means he's three in one. You know, as far as what we can understand in the Bible, we won't even, we don't even no one understands how in reality how how this works. All I know is that he's not affected by time, space, and matter. Therefore, he can have these three aspects of his being and be able to work in these three aspects without having time, space, and matter affect him. So he can be he can be a human form Jesus anytime, no matter if he's on earth or if he's in heaven because he's not affected by these three things. Also, he can be God the Father at the same time while being also God the Son and also God the Spirit. There's a triune being three beings in one but they're not different at all so a lot of churches a lot of uh, denominations a lot of religions try to make this and try to make it seem like he's a three different gods but no he's not three different gods he's three in one so they're they're all they're all three in one so three different forms of deity in one you know they all work in one mindset and have one equal power so yeah god was talking to jesus at that moment okay so and actually one, one cool thing about this and i mentioned that he made us he made us um, after his own image well that can also mean literally because Jesus is the image of God hence why he came down to earth right as a physical form well his physical form was Jesus which was way way before he was actually born here on the earth so therefore Jesus is the image of God in that sense so it says Colossians 1 15 and 16 says who is it who is the image of God talking about Jesus of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created also talking about Jesus that are in heaven that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones dominions principalities powers all things were created by him and for him so that's talking about Jesus himself um, so Jesus is the image of God the invisible God that we cannot see Jesus is the image of him which means that Jesus Jesus' body, Jesus' image, Jesus' um, form is what God based humanity from. You know, so he didn't just create humanity. He just didn't imagine it at that point on the sixth day. No, he, he already had a model of it, which was Jesus Christ, which is himself. So, anyways. Another question is, when is the Antichrist coming? That one was, that one was uh, said by Martin Valencia. So, when is the Antichrist coming? That is a good question. So first of all, what I want to uh, talk about is a misconception of the Antichrist. So the Antichrist in the Bible, it, it, there's a misconception because people think that the coming guy, the Antichrist, is going to be um, uh, or the, what the Bible... Uh, hold on, let me, let me rephrase this. Okay, let me just read 1 John 4, 2-3. It says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth that not that Jesus Christ is, is come... In the flesh is not of God and that is a spirit of the Antichrist so the Antichrist people think oh it's this guy that's coming in the future which he is you can technically say that because Antichrist means against Christ but if you were to actually call the Antichrist a future ruler of the world a good term for him will be the um, I have right here the, the man of lawlessness so the Bible and the book of Daniel talk about the Antichrist and they actually Call him the man of lawlessness. See, that's his actual name, you can say. So the Antichrist is just somebody or a spirit that is against Christ. So when the, the Bible talks about the Antichrist, it doesn't even talk about it in, in Revelations um, or in, in places that it obviously is talking about the quote-unquote Antichrist. Um, the Antichrist himself, you could actually call him man of lawlessness. That would be a more accurate term for the Antichrist. 
So, but the question was, when is the Antichrist coming? So I just wanted to, you know, talk about that a little bit. So Matthew 24, 14, 15 says, and this, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all over the world for witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. And we see that today, right? Everywhere in the world. I mean, I, I'm right here preaching about the gospel of Christ and um, preaching about Jesus, right? Here on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. We're literally, because of this whole pandemic, I think more people are being reached about Christ than ever before. So if this... If the Bible says that the end will not come until the the preach the the, the the gospel is preached all over the world, I mean we're seeing that right now. I believe I believe so we are. So I think the end is coming ASAP. I mean I'm I'm thinking literally. This is my prediction. I could be 100% wrong. Okay, I'm not setting a date, but I'm just saying that I think that the tribulation period, which is a seven-year period, starts in the coming years and probably next year if all things go. As planned to what the world is looking into doing already, what the what the principalities and the governments are doing already. So, um, so yeah, we know that the, first of all, it has to be preached. All, the gospel has to be preached all over the world first before the end to come. So we know that for sure. It says when uh, verse fifteen of Matthew twenty four fifteen says, "When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of, of by the Daniel the Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, who who readeth let him understand." So this is very important. Because this has to happen before the rapture, not after the rapture. People think, oh, the Christians are going to leave and they're going to escape. No, the Bible does not preach that whatsoever. And I'm willing to debate anybody. Okay? It does not. And we'll look at another verse right now. But anyways, that's another point. The point is that it's called the abomination of desolation, which means this Antichrist guy, this man of lawlessness, this ruler of the world in the end of days, in the last seven years of tribulation, this president whatever you want to call him whatever he's going to be we don't know he will not we will not know who he is until he reveals himself and the way he reveals himself is called the abomination of desolation it says he stands in the holy place the holy place it, when it talks about in the bible it's talking about the, the temple of god um, which we don't have a temple of god per se now the temple of god is mainly for the israelites for the jews and we know that that's in jerusalem right well, we they don't have a temple. They have a temple mount, and there's actually an Islamic temple there, but they don't have the rights to be able to build their temple. Um, in 70 AD, that temple was destroyed, just how Jesus predicted it in Matthew 24, um, or Matthew 23. And so in 70 AD, it was destroyed. The second temple was completely destroyed. Now, we are. I think we're going to see that happen soon, months from now, probably even maybe years. I don't know. I'm not making a prediction. But as soon as you see that, that's what the Bible says. As soon as you see the abomination of desolation. So this guy, the Antichrist, goes into the third temple in Israel. Once they built it, they haven't built it yet. And he calls, and he makes himself above all things. So he makes himself a God. And he makes everybody worship him. And we're not just talking about like worship like you worship an artist, right? Or you, you, know, you think fondly of them. No, we're talking about literal worship as in like, I'm worshiping God, Jesus, like that. So this guy will make himself be like God, as God. And he will stand in the holy place. And this is why it's called an abomination, the abomination of desolation. The book of Daniel talks more about this. But I want to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. This is very important, especially for Christians nowadays who think that they will escape the rapture. No, you're not. And a lot of, a lot of people who, who preach this, a lot of churches and denominations preach this also preach about the you know the wealth gospel or the gospel of just good things you know to you the the what is it called i always forget the day name um the prosperity gospel there you go um that's all they preach about oh you're gonna have great things here on earth you, god is gonna bless you and that is not it's not saying it's not good god will bless you but I'm, what i'm saying is don't focus on those things the bible says not to make riches here on earth make riches there up in heaven Okay, that's impo more important than making riches here on earth because the moment we get raptured, we're out of here. What's the point of having a nice car or a nice house? There's no point. Um, so it's very important to understand that you will have to suffer. The Bible says you will be given into great tribulation, Matthew 24. And after the great tribulation, the Son of Man will be seen in the clouds. And Luke talks about that specifically, Matthew 24, 2. And God, Jesus, um, makes his angels. It says the four angels will go to the corners of the heaven and he will pick his elect up which is us um, 
So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 and 5 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye not that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by the Spirit, nor by the Word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away for us, which we're seeing today, right? People are falling away from the gospel. And as it uh, says, and, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all called God, or that is worshipped, so that he so that he has sitteth in the temple of God. We just read that, right? And showing himself that he is God. So the rapture, it says right there, do not be shaken, do not be troubled by spirit, do not be uh, confused by anybody. Don't let any man, any man deceive you. The, the day, This day, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ will not come. Our gathering into him will not come until the son of perdition, um, the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist is revealed. And we talk about this right here. It says he will be, he will be revealed when he sits on top of the temple and he makes himself like God and he makes himself a God, right? This will be international news. I mean, just look at this guy, this political leader who goes into the temple and makes himself a God and he calls himself a God. This will be huge news. The whole world will see. But that's only going to happen in the middle of the seven-year period. What triggers the seven-year period is the signing of a peace treaty and say, um, it says he will make a treaty with many, okay? Um, this Antichrist, we won't know who he is at this time, but he will make a treaty with most likely the Middle East. I don't know, maybe the United Nations. We don't know. We will see that. We will see what happens. But he will make a treaty which will allow peace in the Middle East, most likely, and also the building of the Third Temple, most likely. Therefore, once this temple is built, which I have a prediction of my own, I think that it will be built in three days just how Jesus predicted it. I know he was talking about his body, but I think there's more to that. So basically, the Antichrist will be revealed in the middle of the seven-year tribulation. And I just read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It says, By the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering unto him, this will not happen until the men of lawlessness, the one who opposed himself and exalted himself above all, which is called God, or that is worship, that he sitteth upon the uh, temple of God showing himself to be God so the Antichrist will be revealed in the middle of the seven year tribulation we won't know who he is three and a half years but, but we'll, what will what will start the seven year tribulation is that peace treaty in the beginning so very important um, it's very important to understand that yes unfortunately we are going to be here at, in the in the um, in the tribulation unfortunately all Christians are going to be here just after the great tribulation is when Jesus comes Matthew 24 so I know a lot of churches preach about this and say that but no so we won't know who the Antichrist is until the middle of the tribulation three and a half years into the seven year period but uh, we will know we will kind of have a hint I think people who have the Holy Spirit people Christians will kind of see it right because it says um, Revelation 6 2 says and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him. He went forth conquering and to conquer. So this is talking about the Antichrist right here. And uh, read um, read closely what it says. It said it says he sat on him had a bow. The one who sat on the white horse had a bow. And it doesn't mention any arrows. So I think what this means is this guy's gonna have power. I mean his, his voice. Bible also says that his power is, is in the voice. He, he roars roars like a lion. But but he, um, something like that. Um, I have to look into that. I'm not gonna even say that because I don't wanna misquote the Bible but he has a bow but no arrows mainly mainly it's saying this guy's going to go conquer and most likely with the with the power of his voice this is going to be a tremendous speaker just like Hitler most likely probably even better one of the greatest uh, political leaders ever and this guy will go out and conquer in Revelation 6 too so this is what, this is what we know this guy will, will start to conquer in the beginning of the seven year tribulation uh, once this peace treaty is, is made um, and then on the three and a half years in the middle of the seven year tribulation is when he will reveal himself in the beginning everybody's going to think oh this guy's great this guy's here to save the planet this is going to be do great things and then three and a half years later is when the tables turn and us Christians we know what's going to happen the Bible says flee those are who in Judea flee Matthew 24 flee go leave run far away because 
the coming of our Lord is, is here, right? So basically, we won't know who the Antichrist is until three and a half years into the tribulation when he exalts himself to be God. But what will we what will we know is the fact that he goes out to conquer. And you know, we I think Christians will have an idea of who he is. Um, uh, so there's that. So that was that question. There's another question here. It says, is it right to be from the LGBT community? Should we be against it, or what should we do? So, man, talking about this, this LGBTQ community, man, that's it's difficult to talk about. But here we go. Uh, Romans 5:8. I want to talk about this. It says, but God command commands us, commands His love towards us, in that while we're still sinners, yet while we're still yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right. So. We need, uh, they always say, oh, we need to, uh, God said, God, pretty much people say, um, God loves the sinner, but not the sin. And yeah, it's important. God does not love the sin. God loves the sinner. We're all sinners. And we tend to, as humans, we tend to say, oh, this sin is bigger than this sin. But in reality, all sins are the same according to God, according to his word. So, yeah, um, you know, being LGBTQ, it, 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 there's nothing wrong with having an affection towards something. I can have an affection towards, uh, I don't know, uh, lots of money, right? That's there's nothing wrong with that. But when it when it gets wrong, is how what, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna act upon it? I can have affection towards. Uh, I have affection towards other women. If I was married, uh, I would. I have affection towards other women, right? But I should only have affection towards my wife. I might have affection towards other women because that's my just my emotions. That doesn't mean I have to act upon those emotions. So. You know, it it's not a sin to be attracted to the same sex per se. But what are you gonna do after that? You know, what are you gonna are you gonna act upon that? That's where it comes that's the tricky part. That's where God is not okay with, you know, the activity of you know, the homosexual. God is not okay with that. Because it it goes against nature, you know. And I'm not gonna get into too much of it because it's a very, very delicate thing. But I would like to mention sin in the eyes of God is the same thing as if you can lie, even the widest lie that you think, as to make commit adultery or, or you know, commit uh, homosexual activities. It's the same thing towards the eyes of God. So, you know, the Bible says, Matthew 7, 1 to 5 says, Judge not that ye not be judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So be careful how you judge people because you will be judged the same way. So just be careful with that. However, this, that does not say you should also not judge. Okay, a lot of people, a lot of uh, atheists, a lot of people who do not read the Bible say, oh, that says you're not, you're not supposed to judge. No, it does not say that. Keep reading. It says, and why, bold, why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is thy own eye? So it's saying, okay, how about this? Don't worry about this guy's sin. Worry about your sin first, and then worry about this guy's sin. Okay, you're you're calling out this guy's sin compared to your sin. No, that's that's not what the Bible says. No, and it won't keep reading. It says, "Oh, I mean, sorry, that's what the Bible says." And it says, number four, verse four says, "How wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote of thy eye, and behold, the beam is in thy own eye." So, basically, take what you have in your eye out first. Worry about yourself first. Worry about your house first. Clean up your house first before you start telling somebody else that their house is dirty. Okay? Make sure you got that first. And then worry about somebody else's sin. And we're supposed to do this as, as a loving Christian way. We're not supposed to be just, uh, you know, judging in a harsh manner. No, we're supposed to do it in a loving, caring way. You know, Jesus was amongst sinners. Jesus was, was amongst uh, people who sinned, prostitutes. I mean, he was amongst, you know, quote unquote the worst people he was amongst those people and nothing I mean we're not supposed to judge people like that we're supposed to we are supposed to judge but how about you start in your house first how about you start cleaning your house first before you tell somebody else that their house is dirty that's what the Bible says in Matthew 7 1 5 you know take out the big old log that you have in your eye first and then worry about the little speck of dust in somebody else's eye that's what the Bible says so Here's another great question. It says, what are the great lights? In Genesis 1, 16, it says, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made stars also. So basically, that's just the sun and the moon. 
God creates two great lights. We know that the great light in the day is the sun, excuse me, and that the great light in the night it was the moon, right? And obviously we know that the the moon technically doesn't have light; it actually reflects light from the sun. So we're not going to get into that. It says. Uh, so another uh, question from Sonia Lucero says, "How do we explain the difference uh, of Catholics and Christians? What should we?" And another question was, "What should we do to know when the Father is coming, when Jesus is coming?" So, how do we explain the difference between a Catholic and a Christian? This is very important. It really, this is this really comes down to your salvation, because there's a big, big difference between religion and and having a relationship with God. Religion are sets of rules that man makes. So. I actually wrote this down. It says, um, a religion is a set of rules that man does does to get closer to God using their own righteousness. Meanwhile, meanwhile, God says, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, religion is a difference between Christianity and Catholics. Um, there's a lot of great Catholics, man. There's a lot of good Catholic people. I used to be Catholic, but being Catholic is not going to save you. What's going to save you is having a relationship with Christ. Going to church is not going to save you. I can go to church every single day, but if I don't have Christ in my heart, I'm going straight to hell. Why? Because it's not about going to church. It's not about being a good person. It's not by work so that you cannot, so you won't boast. So, and so what are the biggest differences? The biggest differences would be that I think that many people just go to church on Sundays, many Catholics, but there's no change in them. Um, you still see them, you know, still cuss. You still see them uh, drink, you know, and, uh, and obviously I'm not perfect, you know, but what I'm saying is there has to be a, a dramatic change. There has to be a contrast in their change. When you're born again, you're born again. That means you're not the same. So that's very important. Uh, but idolatry is one of the biggest things. Exodus 23, 4 to 5 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am I a jealous God. So well, this is one of the biggest things. They, uh, Catholics tend to have all these gods. And I know they don't call them gods. They call them saints. But there's no difference. You're still worshiping them. You're still idolatry. And there's still a call of the idolatry because you're still worshiping them. You're still worshiping them, worshiping them like God, even though you think that God the Father or Jesus is bigger than all the other saints. They're still gods. You're still treating them just like Jesus is. In fact, I would argue that some Catholics treat you know their their saints even higher than uh, Jesus. For 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 example, Mary, they treat her a lot more. Uh, you know. I guess you can say they, they treat her more like a god than actual Jesus. Um, so idolatry is one of the biggest things in the Catholic religion. They think and they say that they don't call them gods, that they only have one god, but they treat them just like gods. So that is very, very important. That's one of the biggest differences. So aside from that, it's basically is a difference between religion and a real relationship with God. Um, religion is not going to save you. Just because you're a great person is not going to save you. Because we don't measure up to what God calls good. God calls good. You know what he calls it? He calls it excellence. Moral, moral excellency. Or how do I, how do I say that? Uh, excellent morality. There you go. So to God, being good is being completely perfect. Nobody's perfect. The only one that was willing, uh, perfect enough, not perfect enough. The one that was perfect completely was Jesus. This is why he came down and did everything that the law, he fulfilled the law. And he died for our sins. And Christians 2.89 says, For by grace you are saved through faith. And it's not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. That's it. So you can go to church every single day of your life. And if there's no change, if you don't accept Christ, I'm sorry, but that's what the Bible says. You will go straight to hell. Because you are uh, you are focusing on your good works. You're putting all your salvation on your good works. When in reality, it's not about your good works. It's about God. It's about Jesus. Her other question was, What should we do what should we do know well what should we do to know when the father is coming so when is jesus coming i'm guessing that's what she meant excuse me um i would say i would say this matthew 24 7 nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom 
there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. So once you start seeing these things, you need to worry. And I don't know if you've seen the news around you or go on Facebook or whatever, but man, oh man, is there things going on in the world right now? There's famines. I mean, this COVID-19 and not, e not even just this, um, this whole pandemic and we also have, um, you know, in Africa, all the way even to France, I was just reading today that these, these locusts never ever before seen in hundreds of years are multiplying and multiplying like my toes is like cells just multiplying and they're causing a famine all over Africa you know starting to get up there in, in, um, in Europe and man I, I, not only this but we also have this pandemic to deal with I mean dang these things are going on and we're seeing a lot of you know nations rising against nations we see the tension between China and the US we see the tension between uh, Russia and the US we see the tension between North Korea and the US I mean we just saw that in the beginning of the year um, earthquakes let me get me started on earthquakes right now we're actually seeing a dramatic increase in earthquakes in various places I've never seen before in fact there's probably going to be an earthquake soon you know I'm not predicting this but man hold on California there's gonna be a huge earthquake that will man will do great things um, not good things but great things um, so earthquakes, we're seeing a lot of tsunamis right now. There's a tsunami going to Hawaii, man. I, I'm praying for that, for that Hawaii, the whole the islands, because I, I love going there every single year. And uh, you know, because of this pandemic, I wasn't able to go this year. So hopefully, if this clears up, we might be able to go by the end of the year. But we'll see. Um, but we're seeing, we're starting to see all these things. So when you start seeing these things, man, you need to look up because your redemption is near. And this is exactly what Luke says in Luke 21, verse 22 to 28. 28 says. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are rain may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are that are with child, and them that give suck in, in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath, wrath upon his this people. Notice how it says this people. Okay? And they shall uh, fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled and there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth the distress of nations with perplexity in the sea and the waves roar the waves roaring we're seeing that this weekend there's two huge uh, tsunamis going uh, near Texas and actually near uh, Hawaii so you know things are coming men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking and looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaking so if you think this is crazy this is nothing compared to what's going on. What's going to happen? God will shake down the heavens and the earth. The powers of the heaven will be shaken down. So crazier things things are coming. And then it says, verse twenty-seven: They shall see the Son of Man coming to cover the power and great glory. This is this is the sign. It says when these things begin to come to pass. So we're talking about the beginning of all these things that happen: earthquakes, famines, uh, kingdoms rising against uh, other kingdoms, and rumors of wars and wars. And, um, you know, all these things, when you start seeing all these things being fulfilled, it says, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws near. So, we're starting to see these things happen, right? So, I think, honestly, that Jesus is coming soon. Soon, soon, soon. Um, I'm thinking if, if, he's, if he came here around 28 AD when he left, you know, when he died and resurrected, I'm honestly thinking that, this is my prediction, but I think that he will come back because God comes on time. Um, 2,000 years exactly later, which would put it to, to 20, 2028 AD, or, yeah, AD, which is literally in like seven years, 7.5 years. So, presumably, I think that the tribulation will start next year. I think. Um, this is just my prediction. I've been looking at everything. and I look at the evidence and I think that if it's not starting next year, it's starting soon. Real, real soon. But, man, you should really get prepared. And, and sadly, and I'm not even, I wouldn't even say sadly, but, man, Jesus is coming and, and the tribulation is coming and we're going to be in the great tribulation. The um, Bible clearly states that. And uh, I, you just need to be ready. Be, very, be willing to die for Christ. If, you, if he was willing to die for you, are you not willing to die for Christ and gain eternal life? I am. And, you know, 
it's just going to be amazing. If you die for Christ, you're going to be able to reign with him for a thousand years after all this comes to pass and after all of that, you know, happens. He will come down for 1,000 years and he will reign. He will be here on earth for 1,000 years. He will rule the world for 1,000 years before he creates a new heaven and a new earth. And those people who are, are killed for his name's sake, man, are going to be rulers of, as well, rule with him. Just how it was going to be in the beginning in Genesis. We were supposed to rule with God. You know, that's why we were created unto his image. Um, but yeah, Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. And I just want to do a quick recap. So, what's God talking to in Genesis 126? Well, uh, John 1, 1, 2 says, basically in the beginning was a word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the same was the same was in the beginning with God. So, who was he talking to? Jesus. He was talking to Jesus in that verse. So when is the Antichrist coming? We don't know exactly when he is coming. I think he's already here. Um, we just don't know who he is. And he will reveal himself in the in the middle of the seven year tribulation. What will start trigger what will trigger that seven year tribulation is the treaty that he will make with the Middle East and Israel. And therefore they will make the third temple, which is where he will cause the abomination of desolation, which he calls himself God above all things. And that's when we'll know who the real Antichrist is. Because he calls himself God and here on earth. And uh, there it says that the that the beast, the beast system, excuse me, makes everybody, causes everybody to take the mark of the beast, which is the number of his name, number of man, 666. Um, it says, what's another question they answer? The question was, the LGBT community um, should we be against it or should we what should we do we shouldn't be against it I think you should love your neighbor love everybody love the LGBTQ community um, tolerate them but don't tolerate their sin you know and it's difficult it really is difficult to show this type of love but I'd rather get you mad at me and understand my point of view and understand the fact that you know this is sin against God and God wants you to repent than to lead, lead you astray into hell you know because I love you and because well you can do whatever you want it's it's your thing and love is love no I'd rather hate you hate me and under, I'd rather have you understand that Jesus loves you and that he did everything for you and that yeah he doesn't agree with this he doesn't agree with the activities but he still loves you and he loves homosexuals he loves the LGBT community he loves the sinner but not the sin so um, another question was, what were the great lights in Genesis 116? The great lights were the sun and the moon. And um, how do we explain the difference between Catholic and Christian? Catholics are quote unquote a religion. It's a religion. And Christianity is a real Christianity, a biblical Christianity. It's a relationship with God. Uh, one of the biggest differences is their idolatry. They don't call it idolatry. They call them saints, but they treat them just like gods. Therefore, it is idolatry, and God is a jealous God who does not like that. So, basically, what is the difference between religion and real Christian Christianism? That's the difference. There has to be a real relationship, a real born-again attitude towards Christianity. Um, and then the other question was, when is the Father coming? I think He's coming soon. Soon, soon, soon. It, it will not be a surprise. You will know it. Bible says that no one knows the day or the hour obviously but we do know the season and uh, I see the season coming and I think you should too so just prepare get ready I think he'll be here in less than 10 years I don't know how I don't know how this world can continue for another 20 40 years I I don't and if it does it's because of the mercy of God man but anyways guys this has been the first q and I will save this I'll put this in my YouTube channel just for everybody to see the winner of the drawing was Isaiah Salgado I will message him personally and let him know that he won and I will make him a personalized mug with whatever he wants on there um, yeah guys I really look forward to doing more of this um, please subscribe to my youtube channel and please uh, follow my uh, my page um, verse by verse ministries on instagram for more upcoming videos I will have a video soon tomorrow so God bless you guys so much I will be uploading this as in as much places as I can other social media such as facebook and YouTube. Um, so God bless you guys so much. And amen. God bless you guys. Bye.